Hi, today I'd like to show you my iOS 7 accessibility wishlist. These are the features that I would like to see included um, in Apple's next operating system called iOS 7 that is expected to be released at Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference on June 10th. So the first new feature I'd like to see is the ability to determine if an app is accessible before downloading um, and purchasing the app. So um, let's say I'm browsing through the App Store and um, I can see all these apps um, even if I'm using voiceover it works fine um, but let's say um, maybe looking for Keynote on the iPhone um, here I can see the um, app and press on it but now at this point without buying it I'm unable to tell if um, if it's accessible and with what um, services it works with so for example if it works with voiceover or if it works with speak selection um, mainly voiceover though so one way they could fix this is being able to search and put in there accessible with voiceover so only apps accessible with voiceover come up another thing they could do is add a little icon when voiceover is enabled um, that will speak out um, Apple Keynote accessible with voiceover and then um, continue on and you can read the description another thing they could do is enable trials so you could try out the app for a little bit determine if, it's, if it is accessible and then buy it if you like it the next improvement I would like to see is um, improve do not disturb uh, functionality so do not disturb can be really great um, to keep distractions away from the phone um, when you when you're um, not expecting or don't want text messages or other notifications popping up so to turn it on you go to settings and turn it on and then there's um, the moon appears but um, right now you can only schedule do not disturb for one block of time every day you can't say on weekends turn it on at a different time or on week on Wednesday turn it on earlier maybe because you have a class Wednesday um, and you also can't say when I'm at school turn on do not disturb so I am automatically not receiving text messages and stuff when I don't want to be so um, an improvement to do not disturb that would be really great is ability to to schedule um, more than one time block and also to use the GPS to say if I'm at school or work turn on do not disturb automatically um, in iBooks um, you can use voiceover to read the books aloud you can also use speak selection but um, when you're using speak selection you have to highlight each page individually um, so here I have an iBook open and I'll show you um, a little bit of some trouble I've ran into while trying to use speak selection. So um, speak selection is great. I can highlight um, the text I want read and press read. And what will happen is it will read the entire page um, and highlight as it goes along. So that's really great. Um, but then the problem is, so I highlight this whole page and then it gets to the end. I have to flip highlight again reads all the way flip highlight again and this is kinda of time consuming when you just want to sit back relax and read a book um, there is voiceover for this but for people with um, learning disabilities the highlighting is um, really beneficial and um, and um, voiceover maybe have a greater learning curve for some people that aren't familiar with it so I, I'm hoping um, in iOS 7 they'll add some way to have continuous um, text-to-speech and highlighting in iBooks so maybe they could um, add a speak button or a reading button up up to the top where the controls are and you can press that and it will begin reading at that page and, and continue until you press pause or maybe they can just have a select all with um, speak selection and then you'll be able to um, select the whole book 
and start reading, and then when you get to a stopping point, then you could pause it. But um, in iOS 7, I really would like to see a good way to read iBooks with um, text-to-speech and highlighting. Another thing I'd really like to see is um, improved unlocking, um, improved ease of unlocking. So now um, if you have a password, you have to type it in. And it's time consuming um, for people without disabilities. But for people with disabilities, such as maybe a physical disability or um, bl the blind or visually impaired, it's um, extremely time consuming and um, and kind of difficult. So maybe if there's some way they could add um, a, a gesture password that you only have to use one finger and is um, eyes free so you could draw a gesture without looking at the screen to quickly unlock it or um, possibly um, the fingerprint, the rumored fingerprint sensor on the iPhone 5s would um, be able to do this quickly and easily but um, just an improved way to get the passwords um, to type in your password quickly on your iPhone or iPad. So guided access was re um, introduced in iOS 6 last year and it's a really great feature for parents and teachers to lock a student into a single app. So um, let's say the teacher wants the student to stay in iBooks and doesn't want them to um, go into another app, maybe um, YouTube or the internet. They can turn on guided access by triple clicking the home button, and then they can um, they can um, block out different sections of the app, and then they can press start. One one way they can improve this feature is by having smart button recognition. So here I drew. Um, I drew the areas that I don't want the student um, or child to be able to access. But in some apps, these um, buttons move around and they're not, they don't always stay in the top right corner. So let's say if the store button moved to, um, moved to the middle of the screen when I rotate the device or something, or when I um, open a book, maybe the store button moves somewhere in the book. Well, it would be nice if that button was still blocked out even though I didn't draw a circle around that area. This happens a lot when you're playing a video from the from a book and then the store button is blocked out but it changed into the stop playing button and then you have no way of getting out. But another thing they um, it would be nice if they added was the ability to put a, put a student or a child into more than one app. So here maybe you can lock the device into iBooks and um, the Bookshare app or iBooks and the Notes app if the kid wants to take a note or iBooks and the voice recorder if they want to record a note but currently you can only lock guided access into a single app and it would be nice if they expanded that to allow you to lock somebody into multiple apps also it would be nice if you could set a guided access timer so maybe um, the parent says okay you have to read this iBook for a half an hour. So they can set the timer for a half an hour, and after the half, a, half an hour is up, the device unlocks and is out of the single app mode, and you can go on using the device as normal. Another feature I'd like to see is multi-user support for the iPad. This would be great for schools and families with multiple people to be able to more easily share their device. Another feature I'd like to see added is a similar feature to what was already added to iTunes on the Mac, which is the ability to take a picture of a gift card and redeem it. Because um, blind can't read these gift cards, this is an essential feature to allow people with blind, the blind or visually impaired to redeem gift cards on their device. Another feature that would be nice is smarter camera features. So the iPhones and iPads are getting great cameras, but there's some software features that would make them even better for the blind. So for example, in iOS 7, um, I mean in iOS 5, I believe, they added a camera feature that allowed um, the blind to center faces in the camera by using voiceover. 
And when you had a face in the frame, voiceover would announce it by saying one face, um, small or large face, and then the location in the screen. This would be a great feature to add for other things. Maybe f they could um, do instant recognition of other things like um, objects and simple things that could help um, blind line up photos um, e more easily. Maybe they could do start off with very simple things and work up to more complex things. Also, after you have taken the picture, currently it's kind of difficult for the blind to remember maybe well, they lined up their photo of those two faces, um, and if, if they don't have the opportunity to send it immediately, it can be difficult to remember, oh, what was the picture I took on um, this date? Because that's all the information you get from VoiceOver in the Photos app. So I think what they could do is send the photo to a server, maybe um, like an iCloud serv server if you enable it, and then back from the server, it could... Um, use um, recognition like from the app tap tap C which is incredibly um, good at recognizing images so for example if you take a picture of a man with a baseball cap it even tells you a man with a blue baseball cap so they could send the photo up to the cloud and get that type of description back and then the person um, could easily send the um, picture off knowing that they're sending the picture of the man with the baseball cap and not the picture of the car or the picture of um, something else. Um, also they can use um, OCR to do some of this too so if you take a picture of a book it might be able to use OCR to um, read the cover and then you're able to um, voiceover would be able to tell you it's the picture of um, this book so then you can easily send off the picture without having to guess oh was this the picture I take on was the picture I took on this day of the um, person or of the book or of a car and then you can always be sure um, if you're blind or visually impaired which picture you're sending off. Another feature I'd really like to see is the op ability to choose which text-to-speech voice you'd like to use. Currently there's just one um, that you can use and it would be really great if Apple added different um, text-to-speech voices like maybe the Alex voice that is found on the Mac and is of very high quality. Um, the last feature that I'd like to see in iOS 7, well the last one that I'm going to share with you, um, is, the, is um, more map accessibility in third-party apps. So when they when Apple introduced their much criticized um, new Maps app, one feature that was really great for um, voiceover users is um, with the update you were able to explore the map and read the labels and even follow streets to get an idea of the landscape. Um, this is a really great feature, and hopefully they improve on that a little bit in iOS 7. But also when um, a, another app uses that same um, mapping, that same Apple Maps, I found that that accessibility does not carry over into the third-party app, which is very unfortunate. So for example, here in the Nike Running app or some other apps that I have that are third-party apps that still use Apple's mapping technology, they're, um, th and even um, the Find My iPhone app, they don't seem to have that voiceover compatibility built in. And when you um, run your finger over the map, you don't get the same type of information that you do when you're exploring the map in the actual Maps app. So it'd be really, um, it would make a lot of sense and it would be very helpful if um, that type of map accessibility that's built right into the um, Apple Mapping app would just carry over into apps that use the Apple mapping um, features. It's really exciting to see what Apple will do with iOS 7 this year. Last year at WWDC they added um, a lot of new accessibility features to iOS 6 and even highlighted iOS um, accessibility in the keynote. 
Apple has been committed to accessibility for a number of years now on all of its products, and it's very exciting to see what iOS 7 will bring. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to the Assistive Technology blog for all the iOS 7 news.